Nice talking to you too, Oprah. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, so that was a fake phone call. Shockingly, this doesn't work anymore. And honestly, who even makes phone calls now? If my wife or my parents call me, I assume something horrible has happened. And if it's not them, I probably don't answer the phone at all. Just text me. Actually, don't text me. Voice message me. That's the best way. Let me back up. The problem with phone calls isn't the part where you say words with your mouth. It's all the logistics. When someone calls you, they have no idea if you're busy. They're just bursting into the room like the Kool-Aid man to see if you want to chat. Then there's the ritual of it. You dial, and then you wait, and then they say hello, and then you small talk, and then you get down to business, and then you small talk again, and then finally you get to hang up. You could be like the people in movies who just say cool stuff like, it's time, and hang up, but that comes off kind of rude in real life. Texting took off because it ditched all that. I can text you anytime, long or short messages, and you can read it and get back to me whenever's convenient for you. But texting has its own problems. It can be harder to hear nuance or subtext or sarcasm. If you've ever accidentally made someone really confused or even mad during a text chat, you know what I'm talking about. There's a happy medium here, and it's already baked into your phone. You might never have noticed, but there's a button in the iPhone's Messages app that lets you send a voice message. Tap and hold on the microphone, say whatever you need to say, and hit send. It sends in the thread right alongside your texts, and they can tap it to play whenever they want. And here's my favorite part. You can set it so that the voice message disappears two minutes after someone listens to it. WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, and a few other apps have similar features. Voice messaging is hugely popular in places like China, which has a symbols-based language that can be hard to type. But even in English, I can say, what are you up to for dinner tonight? I'm in the mood for sushi. Let's do that place you were talking about last week in a whole lot less time than it takes to type. And it actually enables all sorts of new methods of communication. This fall, the Apple Watch will get a new feature called Walkie Talkie. You tap someone's name and send a message, and they tap to send one back. There are apps like Zello and Voxer that work the same way. You can use your Amazon Echo to send voice messages without ever having to pick up a device. Alexa, send a voice message to Wilson Rothman. To Wilson Rothman, right? And there are devices like this, the Republic Wireless Relay, that let you keep in touch with a kid or parent without all the other features of a smartphone. There's definitely some awkwardness that comes with this kind of messaging. You're talking, then waiting, then tapping, then talking again. And you might not want all your incoming messages read aloud for anyone to hear. You can tweak your phone settings to automatically play a new message when you hold your phone to your ear. It'll feel like listening to voicemail, only way, way easier. For catching up with loved ones or important business conversations, phone calls are still great. And texting is the right thing for lots of situations too. But for the ongoing bits of life, planning and asking questions and just lightly catching up with people, voice messaging kind of combines the best of both worlds. Oh, sorry, I gotta get this. Hi David, it's Dr. P just calling to check in on how our body odor remedy Ooh. is working. Mm. Just please use discretion. You never know what's behind that play button.